Have you heard the strange tales of the whistler? I'll tell about yours. So it's plain to be seen that you and I will have to work together. Friday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight, the odd story of the tangled web. Hester Mayberry, an elderly widow, has inherited the large estate of her late husband. And having no children, she adopted two. Claude Mayberry, her husband's orphaned nephew, and Lita Davis, the daughter of her dead sister. Lita has finished school and is returning home. Claude still has another year in college. But Aunt Hester has plans for Claude and Lita. Plans for keeping the estate in one family. This is upsetting to Claude, for he has already selected the girl of his choice, Pearl Wallace. Pearl, I, I had to see you. Something's happened. Claude, I've never seen you so upset. It's Aunt Hester. Her heart again? Oh, no, no, she's still hanging on. What is it, then? It's Lita. Lita's finished school a year ahead of schedule. She's coming home today. Mm, So what? Well, Aunt Hester is determined that I marry Lita. According to the doctors, Aunt Hester won't last more than six months. I know. But I never dreamed Lita would come home this year. Aunt Hester will insist upon an immediate marriage. But you can't marry Lita. I know, but if Aunt finds out the truth about you and me, she'll cut me off. Oh, I'm in a terrible jam. Can't we... Can't you head Lita off somewhere? Oh, no, no, it's too late. She's probably at the house now. I just found out she was arriving today. Why can't I see your aunt? Just once. She may change her mind. Oh, no. No, You don't know Aunt Hester. Nothing can change her mind. She's the most determined, stubborn old woman you've ever seen. Well, since you can't marry Lita. Certainly not. That would be bigamy. Half of the estate is willed to me and half to Lita. But if she finds out that I'm already married, well... Suppose Lita refused to marry you. She won't. Because she knows Aunt Hester would throw her out. Now, Lita's too smart for that. Well, something's got to be done. You've got to stall things off until... Well... So Aunt Hester is dead. You'd better run along, Claude. I've got to get back to work. Yes, Claude can think of several ways out of his terrible predicament. As a matter of fact, he's studying over an idea at this very moment. He has a plan in mind, a very dangerous plan. But then old Aunt Hester is going to leave this world anyway, so... Well, he'll wait and see. At the moment, Lita is in Aunt Hester's sitting room on the second floor of the old mansion. Well, Aunt Hester, you look wonderful. No such thing. Why lie about it? I look terrible. Oh, really? You've improved. I haven't improved. The doctors say I may last six months, but I don't believe them. If I'm here six weeks, I'll be surprised. That's why I wanted you to come home immediately. I did want to go to Canada this summer. I know, but I have important plans for you, Lita. Plans? Oh, what plans? I'm announcing your... Come in. Lisa. Well, uh, how are you? Very well, Claude. And you? Come in here, Claude. And quit gaping like a fool. Yes, sir. Well, I didn't expect you to graduate this summer. You must have crammed. I expected you to be in the army. Oh, I will be when I finish college. Well, now that you're both here, I'll finish what I started to say. Yes, sir? I don't expect to be on this earth many more weeks. I've made a will leaving half of my property to each of you. Oh, that's good of you, Aunt Hester. Yes, of course. And tomorrow I'm announcing your engagement. What? And... Engagement? And a week from tomorrow I want you to be married. Married? You want Claude and me to... That is my greatest desire and my final request. I've looked forward to that for a number of years. And I want to be present at the ceremony. But Aunt Hester, has it ever occurred to you that we may not love each other enough to... Nonsense. Besides, I want the estate to remain intact. In the family, as it were. Oh, but, Aunt, don't you think it might be a great mistake to... I'm not in the habit of making mistakes. And if one of you refuses to carry out my wish, I'll cut that one off without a cent. How do you understand? Yes. We understand. And leave me alone. I must rest. (laughs) 
Claude is frantic. On the way to the library, horrible thoughts run through his mind. What shall he do? How can he marry Lita? If he did, it would be prison for bigamy. What are we going to do about this, Claude? I don't know, Lita. Did you know she had any such plan for us? Well, yes, but I didn't take it seriously. And why didn't you let me know about it? Well, because I didn't expect you to finish till next year. And by then, I thought... Thought what? That Aunt Hester would be gone. Oh, you're a fool, Claude. You should have let me know. Well, what difference would it have made? She's determined. And if we refuse... If everyone refuses, we'll get nothing. And if we both refuse, we'll both be cut off. Oh, yes, but... You don't love me. And you don't want to marry me, do you? Oh, but I haven't refused. What about that girl who works in town? That Pearl Wallace. Pearl? Why, what about her? What will she say if you marry me? Oh, what can she say? Ever hear a breach of promise? You're trying to bluff me into refusing. You mean you're willing to marry me? You can't bluff me. Pearl wouldn't like it, Chloe. It's none of her business. She wouldn't do a thing. That's what you think. I'm not going to lose my inheritance, Pearl and no Pearl. I'll keep her quiet. How? Well, I'll pay her. She'll be satisfied. I know she will. I I talked to her this afternoon. Did you? Well, you might be able to get rid of a sweetheart that way. But a wife would be more difficult. What? How did you know? How? How did I know you and Pearl were married? Yes, how did you know? You just admitted it. I was only guessing. <laughs> well, that does it, Claude. We couldn't get married if we wanted to. Oh, please. Please, Lita, we don't hate each other. We're good friends. I don't want to lose my share. Please don't tell Aunt Hester. What on earth can we do about it? You aren't free to marry me, so she's got to find out the truth. But if she does, well, then you'll get all of it. But after Aunt Hester's gone, I can give you your half of the estate. I don't believe you. You just have to trust me. I don't trust you. You wouldn't give me a cent. All right. What else can be done? I haven't refused to marry you, but you're already married. What else can we tell her? There's no other way. No. But maybe there is. What did you say? No. Nothing I was just thinking. Oh, there you are. So well, telling us oh. I finally got our baggage. It was on the second yeah. section by oh, mistake. Well, come in, Mr. Brandt. Mr. Brandt? Where do you get that, Mr. Brandt? Uh, Mr. Brandt, this is my uh, my cousin, Claude Mayberry. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Claude. How do you do? What was the name? Brandt, Alan Brandt. You know what I think happened, Lita? When they took our baggage out of our stateroom in Boston, we forgot to have a change from... Oh, uh, Mr. Brandt, to... I want you to meet my aunt. What? Well, well of course, I expected yes, to. Yes, she's been ill for some time. This way. Oh, well, see you later, Claude. Oh, by the way, Mr. Brandt, congratulations on your marriage. I hope you and Lita will be very happy. Oh, sure. Thanks, old man. Married yesterday, were you? A day before in New York. <laughs> Wonderful. Will you wait outside a second, Alan? I'd like to talk to Claude alone for a moment. Well, well yes. Yes, of course. So I'm a fool, am I, Lita? <laughs> you slipped up on that one. You should have warned him. Doesn't he know how things stand? No, he doesn't. I'll tell him. Well, that sort of makes us even, doesn't it? We're both in the same boat. Well, what happens now? Aunt Hester will have to be told the truth. Well, we've, we've got to stall a while. Well, how are you going to explain his presence here? Well, I'll, I'll tell her he's a friend. Down for a few days' visit. In the meantime, we'll decide what to do. Yes? You know, Claude, if you tell about my marriage, I'll tell her about yours. So it's plain to be seen that you and I will have to work this thing out together. Well, do you have any ideas, Lita? Do you? Well, no. I... Oh, yes, you do, Claude. You have ideas. I know what they are. I can read you like a book. Oh, but Lita... There are three ways of solution. If Aunt Hester were to pass away before she learned the truth, then everything would be all right. Or, if something should happen to me, then the whole estate would go to you. That's two ways. And the third? <laughs> I must run along now, Claude. I'll see you later. Yeah. Three ways, Claude. Three ways. First, your Aunt Hester. Second, Lita. And the third, well, you know what Lita meant. Think fast, Claude, and be careful. Lita doesn't trust you any more than you trust her. Of course, I know another way to solve your problem. But I'm not the one to decide. So as it stands, it's either your aunt, or Lita, or you, Claude. Aunt Hester, I'd like to talk to you. Yes, Claude, come in, come in. What do you want? Well, well, I don't know how to say this, Aunt, but... Say what? 
Well, I'm actually afraid to tell you, but I've got to. Even at the expense of my life. What are you talking about, your life? Yes. If I tell you what I know, they'll kill me. Have you been drinking? Oh, no. Well, who'll kill you? Lita and that fellow Alan Branch she brought here yesterday. Lita? You're out of your mind? Oh, I know it sounds fantastic, but it's true. Kill you? Lita? Oh, go take some soda and sober up. Please, Aunt Hester, not so loud. I never heard of such nonsense. Lita, why should she want to kill you? You'll understand when I tell you. The woman you're going to marry wants to kill you? Yes, Lita and Alan Brent. What has Brent to do with it? They both want me out of the way. Claude, you sit down in that chair. I'm going to call Dr. Gregory. No, 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 please. I I can explain. Well, then you'd better do it and quickly. Well, you must promise me that you won't tell Lita or anyone that I told you. Why should I promise that? Because if they knew that I told you... Well, that's why they kill me. I'm getting dizzy. Go on. Well, that fella, Alan Brent, isn't just a friend visiting here. He's... He's Lita's husband. What? What did you say? They're married. Look at this license. I found it in Lita's room. Good heavens. I, I can't believe it. They know that I know about it. But Lita said that if I told you that something would happen to me, she's afraid you'll change the will and cut her off. And that's exactly what will happen. She must be crazy. How could she marry you next Friday? She might know I'd find out. Well, maybe... Maybe she thought you wouldn't. What? What are you trying to say? Well, maybe she thought she could postpone everything until... Until what? Oh. Until after I was gone. Yes, Sam. I hate to say it, but that's her plan. I, the ungrateful... Oh, please, little... don't let her know that I told you. I'll just have a talk with those two. And don't believe anything she says about me. What do you mean? Well, she's all set to tell you some cock and bull story about me and some girl. I did go around with a girl for a while, but Lita's going to tell you that we're married. But don't believe her, because I can get the girl over here and she'll tell you the truth. Very well, Claude. Run along. I'll send for Lita and Mr. Brent later. I must rest a bit. This has been a terrible shock. Yes, Sam Hester. <laughs> Hester, do you want to see me? Yes, Lita. I wanted to see you and Mr. Brent. Oh? Come in, Ellen. She wants to see us. Oh, how are you, Mrs. Mayberry? Very well. So far. I hope you feel better, Anne. Do you? Do you really? Well, if I say I do feel better, I suppose you'd be disappointed, Lita. What? Do you expect to stay here long, Mr. Brent? Well, I... Well, no, that is... Did I... I understand you to say Mr. Brent was a friend of yours, Lita? Just here for the week? Uh... Yes, of course that's what I said. We've been good friends for two years. Friends? And is that all? Aunt Hester, what on earth? Is that right, Mr. Brent? Friends? Well, yes. Yes, of course. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I was quite worried. Aunt Hester, that nonsense. You had no reason to be upset. And you fully intend to marry Claude next week? Well, I... Uh, as a matter of fact, it is a little sudden. I, I wasn't prepared. I was going to ask you... Ask me what? Well, if we couldn't postpone it for a few weeks. And why should you postpone it? You know that I wanted your marriage to take place while I'm here? Yes, Aunt, I know, but... Everything is arranged. But uh, a few days wouldn't matter, would it? There's so many things I'd like to attend to. Would another week give you enough time, Lita? Time to attend to those important things? Well, I suppose so. But I'd really prefer a month. But I want to be sure that I'm able to attend the wedding, Lita. I may not last that long. However, I'll consent to one week from next Friday. Oh, thank you, Aunt Hester. I knew you'd understand. Did you? Well, there's just one thing that I don't understand. What's that? Just how you'll be able to get a divorce in two weeks and get married a week from Friday. Divorce? A divorce from this man, Alan Brent. I don't understand what you mean. What sort of a fool did you take me for? I wasn't born yesterday. You've been lying from the moment you stepped into this house. Aunt Hester, there must be some mistake. There's no mistake. My maid found this marriage license in your room. No. You've been stalling for time, hoping I'd die before the truth came out. I, I've never thought of you such a thing. You can't deny that you two are married. No. No. That's all I have a right to choose my husband. You're an ungrateful girl, Lisa. You've disappointed me. And you could expect not one cent from me. No. Now get out of this room. But, Aunt... And get out of this house by Monday morning. <laughs> Lita knows how Aunt Hester found out. She knows it wasn't the maid who found the license. It was Claude. But she'll take care of Claude, and very nicely. If she is out in the cold, then she'll see to it that Claude is out in the same way. 
So she phones Pearl, Claude's wife, to come to the house. I'm Pearl Wallace. Oh, yes. Won't you come in? I... I got a call from Mrs. Mayberry's maid. She said Mrs. Mayberry wanted to see me. Oh, I see. Yes, she does want to see you. Are you Lita? Yes, I'm Lita. How did you know? Oh, I've seen your pictures, and I've heard Claude talk about you. Mm -hmm. Do you know Claude well? What? Yes, is he here? No, not at the moment. Well, what does Mrs. Mayberry want with me? Well, Aunt Hester found out about you and Claude. What? Now, don't get excited, Pearl. Everything's all right. But, but I thought... Yes, yes, I know. That she wanted Claude and me to be married. Yes. Well, you can't always keep a thing like this a secret. Somebody's bound to know. Someone in town accidentally told her about it. Oh. At first, she was terribly angry. But after I talked to her for a while, well, she seemed to see things differently. Then you think everything is all right? Why don't you go upstairs and tell her all about it? I'm sure she'll like it. All right. Thanks for telling me, Lisa. <laughs> In the sitting room. This room on the right. Yes? May I come in, Mrs. Mayberry? And who are you? I'm Pearl. Pearl? Pearl Wallace. Pearl, what do you want? I'm Claude's wife. Claude's wife? Yes, I am, really. Look, here's a marriage license, see? What are you doing here? Well, I thought you wanted to see me. Claude's wife. Claude's wife. I, I just can't believe it. But I really love Claude. Really, I do. Oh, I don't know what I've done to deserve all this. First later and now Claude. But, Mrs. Mayberry, I'm a perfectly normal girl. I've done nothing wrong. Why shouldn't I make Claude a good wife? Leave this room. Leave me alone. But I, I thought you sent for me, that, that you wanted to talk to me. I what? I sent for you. Who told you that? Well, I thought it was your maid. I don't want to see you. Get out and leave me alone. Oh, yes. yes, I'll go. Pearl. Yes, Pearl. Pearl, why have you come here? I don't know. I wish I had You've seen that, Hester. Why? What did you say? I told her we were married. Showed her the license. What? Why did you do that? Why? thought she wanted to see me. Her maid... At least I thought it was her maid phoned me that she wanted to see me. And what did Aunt Hester say? She told me to get out. Apparently she knew nothing about me until I told her. I can't understand it, Claude. Why would... And yet Lita knew your aunt was expecting me. Yeah, she said so. Lita? Lita knew? Are you sure? Yeah, she met me first. She said your aunt had found out, and I suppose she'd relented. Lita. Well, that explains everything. Now, I'm out in the cold, thanks to Lita. But believe me, I'll beat her yet. She's not so smart as she thinks. Look, Pearl, you're staying here tonight. No, I don't want you're to. You're staying here whether you want to or not. But just what can you do, Claude? Doing away with Lita won't help so long as Aunt Hester is alive. This is really a problem. Why not talk it over with Lita tonight? Lita has many clever ideas. And since you're both in the same predicament, well... Lita. Claude, what are you doing in my room? What do you want? I want to talk to you. No, don't turn on the light. Well, turn your mind. Just what are we going to do about this situation, Lita? I haven't the slightest idea. We've both played our last cards. I told Aunt Hester about you. You got wise and pulled a fast one by sending for Pearl. Now we're both even. Yes, Claude, now we're both even. But where are we? Yes, Claude. Where are we? We're at the point where we've got to work together. My working against you or your working against me no longer means a thing. Aunt Hester knows about us both. And next Monday morning, she'll change that will. I know. Well, haven't you any suggestions? Oh, I have several ideas. But I'm not telling them. The moment. Monday isn't far away. What's on your mind, Claude? Well, if anything happened to either you or me, well, neither one of us would gain a thing, so long as Aunt Hester's able to change that will. Now, Aunt Hester isn't well. No. She can't last much longer. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. You know exactly what I mean. Murder. No, not murder. Not in a way that we can be caught nor convicted. And why should we mess up our lives because of Aunt Hester's eccentricities? Well, go on. 
Well, suppose her heart failed her tonight. Suppose it doesn't. I think it will. In fact, I'm sure it will. Oh, what you... You mean poison? They'll find it. No, believe me, there'll be no trace. No one will find anything. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. Why don't you do it without telling me? Because I don't trust you, Lita. I wanted you to be in on it. And I know you'll keep your mouth shut. In on it? What do you mean? Isn't it worth a million dollars to get up out of that bed and come with me? This is your only chance of getting it. Why must I go with you? Because you'll be the first one to implicate me. But if you're with me at the time, I know you'll keep quiet. Come on, Lita. Oh, if you pull a bone on we're Don't be silly. Come on. All right. You better know what you're doing. But you're in accord with the general idea, aren't you? Yes. No other way. Well, then come on. And be as quiet as possible. No, no. Leave your door open. You'll want to get back here as soon as possible. Here we are. Easy now. Aunt Hester. Aunt Hester. Don't wake her up. Yes? Who's there? Are you awake, Aunt Hester? Huh? What do you want? Who is it? Wake up, Aunt Hester. Wake up. I can't see a thing. Wait till I turn on the light. No, don't turn on the light. That you, Lita? Yes. It's Lita and Claude. What do you want? What do you want? Why don't you answer me? What are you two doing here? We've decided that you shouldn't linger on in your condition, Aunt Hester. Your heart's causing you too much pain. What? So we've decided to bring your suffering to an end. Lita and I have decided to end your suffering. You and Lita. You ungrateful fools. Hurry up, Claude, whatever it is. Do We're it. going to kill you. It's the only way. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. In just five seconds, Aunt Hester. Five seconds. You're crazy. You're both out of your mind. You know you'll be caught. Maybe I am crazy. But in just two seconds, I'm going to shoot you right through the heart. No, no. 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 Ah. Lord. She's dead. She's dead. Of course. Here, take this gun and get back to your room as fast as you can. Go on. And remember... You haven't heard a sound. In another room on the same floor, Alan Brent, Lita's husband, sits on the edge of his bed, rubbing his eyes, listening intently to the early morning silence. Something startled him. Finally, he steps to his door, looks down the hall, and moves along the passageway toward Aunt Hester's room. Then, as he turns, Pearl's door opens, and she steps into the hall. Mr. Brandon. What are you doing up? What are you doing at this hour? Well, I, I thought I heard a noise, like a shot. Yeah. Well, so did I. It woke me up. It sounded like it might have come from this end of the hall. It could have been a shot. I'm not certain. Mm, yes, it could have been. I wonder. Look, Mrs. Maybury's door is open. Yes. Let's have a look in there. She must have come in this room. It was so close. Turn on that little lamp on the table. Oh. Is she all right? Feel her bolts. No. Good heaven, she's... She's dead. She's dead. She's been murdered. Come, let's get out of here. Lita! Lita! God! God, get the doctor! Aunt Hester's been killed! Lita, your aunt's been shot! Call the doctor! Oh, you're she crazy. You didn't hear a thing. you, I heard a shot. I was just half asleep, but I know I heard it. And why did you wait so long to arouse the rest of us? Well, I, I really don't know. I heard it, too, but I wasn't quite sure either. And how's it happened that you didn't hear it, Lita? Well, I, I don't know, but I, I just didn't. It's quite possible she may have been sleeping too soundly. And you didn't hear it either, Claude. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. If I'd heard a shot, I'd have been the first one out of the room. I wouldn't have waited as long as you and Alan did. No? Well, the strange thing is that your room's closer to Aunt Hester's room than mine or Lita's. I heard it, so did Pearl, yet you and Lita didn't. Does that seem strange to you, Mr. Brent? Yes, it does. Does it seem strange to you, Pearl? Well, I... well, if Alan heard it, then what I can't understand is why Lita didn't hear it. Well, I can understand Lita, perhaps, but I still can't see why Claude didn't hear the sound. And furthermore, whoever fired the shot must still be in the house. The bedroom windows were closed from the inside. I heard nothing, I tell you. Maybe you didn't want to. <clears throat> What are you doing? What are you insinuating? You know more about it than you say. You had a motive. Just a minute, Pearl. Not so fast. No, not so fast, Pearl. Claude didn't hear it, so he says... I think he knows more than he says he does. And he has just as much of a motive as Lita, maybe more. You're crazy, Brent. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're just jumping to conclusions. Oh, no. You're not going to pull a thing like this and then place the blame on Lita. Claude had nothing to do with it. It was Lita. And she's trying to place the blame on Claude. And how do you know? 
You and Claude occupy separate rooms? You and Lita occupy separate rooms, too. I think I'd better run upstairs and see what the doctor has to say. Oh, no, you don't. You take one step up those stairs and I'll break your neck. Oh, please, Alan, please, don't stop it. It's already started. He's too smart to suit me anyway. I know what he's had on his mind for days. That's a lie. If anyone's had anything on his mind, it was Lita. If she can place the blame on Claude, she'll get everything. She's got it all figured out. She stirred up all the trouble in the first place. Oh, oh, shut up. You got me out here. It wasn't the maid who phoned me. It was you. And you said Mrs. Maybury wanted to see me. Well, she knew nothing about it. She practically threw me out. But you won't get away with your scheme. Believe me, sister. You're crazy. I'm wise, said Claude. I heard the shot, and I know who fired it. He's got the gun somewhere, and I'm calling the police. They'll find out what happened to Aunt Hester. That's all this fussing about shots and police. What's wrong with all of you? Why, uh, nothing, Dr. Gregory. No, no, nothing at all. He's the one who did it. Did what? Shot his Aunt Hester. Why? He did not. Lita killed her. Well, Mrs. Mayberry is dead, I'm sorry to say. I'm amazed she lasted this long. But certainly she wasn't killed. Where'd you get such an idea? She... She wasn't killed? But we... We heard a shot. That is, I... I thought... Well, you can think what you like. But Hester Mayberry died of natural causes. Just as I knew she would. You mean... There's no bullet wound? Oh, Shaw, that's ridiculous. Well, then we... We must have imagined it. Well, now, I'd say you've all been having a nightmare. I... I think you're right, Dr. Gregory. And thanks for coming over. Mm. Well, I uh, phoned the mortician. I'll just wait in the library till he comes. Good night. Of course there were shots, and they all know it. But all but Claude are surprised that no wound was found. Not even a bullet. But Claude isn't surprised. Because he fired blanks at the aunt. Knew the shock would be too much for her. But when the doctor said death was from natural causes, they uh, shut up like clams. Their troubles were at an end. They wouldn't get their shares of the share of the estate after all. Of course, they would get their their share. (laughs) However, they will be struck a horrible blow next week when the lawyer reads the will of Aunt Hester and they learn that Lita and Claude must be man and wife prior to the aunt's death or the entire estate goes to charity. And that's just what will happen. That was one thing they hadn't counted on. So they all end up with nothing after all. has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed by Wilbur Hatch and conducted by Ivan Dittmar. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time... I, the Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.